Hi, I'm Marty Shupak for Shupak Sports. And this session is, uh, I guess it's number 15. I have my memory right, but I'm going to do hitting drills. I've gotten a number of emails. We've done, we've touched on hitting drills before, but let's do a few more and let's get right into it. The first two I just want to go over are for young players. And this is geared really for 8 to 12 and 13 year olds. However, I've had um, high school and college coaches use a lot of my drills. I've been in touch with a lot of them over the years and you could adjust any one of my drills to the ability and age of the players. First drill I have for young players is I call it the uh, beach ball plunger drill. So if your son or daughter has like younger brother or sister and then just get involved in t-ball, it, it's so hard first time to put a four, five, or six-year-old uh, kid up and tell them to hit the ball. Their head's going to wander. There are a different uh, tricks and tips that you could do in t-ball. And, and if you look at some of my t-ball products or on the Shoe Pack Sports channel, you'll see some of the tips. But what we do is you put a plunger, uh, as you see, into a T, and then you put a beach ball on top of it. It increases the odds for the player to hit the ball. Um, obviously, uh, it's much easier to hit a beach ball size ball than a, a baseball or a softball. And what we do is we work our way down from this. Okay, there are a couple of tricks you could, for the young T-ball players, you could put uh, stickers on the ball, like uh, animal stickers, and tell them to hit it. And um, I have it set up just right behind me, as you see. I have a batting tee. And th this is a new plunger I got from uh, one of the home centers. I think it was $1.99. Obviously, you want, don't want to use a plunger that you use in your house. You stick it in the center of the batting tee. And I put the ball on top. This is a kickball. And you use any size ball, but it's good with the young kids to start with a beach ball. Okay, that's one drill. Another drill for the young kids, and again, I'm just going to go over two, is the newspaper toss drill. Okay? Now, keep in mind that uh, in this day and age, you know, that they're, we're kind of becoming a paperless society, or that's where they're gearing towards. So newspapers are hard to come by. But I found that if you do get a hold of a newspaper, you have access to it, or even a paper bag, and you roll it up and you toss it to young players, they will hit it. You could use one of those big red plastic bats. The paper bag or newspaper will eventually uh, spread out. I like to take two and roll them up. When I say spread out, the further you're away from the player to hit, but the key to this is, and keep in mind, young players in sports, the two biggest reasons why they leave a certain sport are, number one, embarrassment amongst their peers, and number two, fear of injury. And I've seen this happen in baseball and softball a lot. Now, if you overcome those two fears, you're giving a young athlete or a young uh, child a chance to blossom. Some young kids never fulfill any sort of potential in athletics because they've gotten hurt or they were embarrassed at the very beginning. Try to overcome that. Okay, a couple of things too. When you're a coach, a tip is <clears throat> make sure you have your players get an eye test. Talk to the parents at the parents' meeting. It's so important. I've had two players in the course of 30 years that I literally turned their playing career around because I noticed something was off as far as their eyesight. On one player, I noticed night games, he was a lot different than day games. And apparently he had some sort of stigmatization. I think that's what you call it for night. And they gave him contact lenses. He was a different ball player. And another player, he just was he had a great swing. He was just missing the ball, and we had him take an eye test, and he got contacts, and he ended up becoming an excellent high school ball player. So 
Make sure your players and tell your parents you want them to have an eye test and don't overlook an air test. I always tell the story years ago, the great coach, Vince Lombardi, his last year coaching Washington Redskins. He had a running back, Larry Brown. He noticed that he had talent, but he was getting off the line a little bit slower than what how the play was called. And he had him take an air test and turned out that he was hearing the signals from the quarterback a little delayed. And at that time, you weren't allowed to have any sort of headphones in the helmet. But he went to the NFL and they um, gave him permission. Larry Brown became an excellent running back. Okay, let's get back to the drills. Kids are older. A great drill is the toss drill, which I just showed you with the T-ball. But what I do for players, and let me hold it up close, you get on one knee and you're about a 45 degree angle. And what I use, have used over the years is a, what I call a rag ball. I'd go to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, I'd buy a new box of rags. And then with one inch and two inch masking tape, I would wrap it up and then you toss them underhand and the players have to hit it. Now, what you're doing is you never want to do a toss drill with a hard ball against the fence. That's not good for the fence. Your league might not allow it. But when you do the toss drills with the rag balls, there are a lot of different drills you could do. After the player gets accustomed to it, what I did after that is I would toss well, first of all, I would do one in one color, one and one in the other color. I toss them up together and I'd yell either blue or white and then have to hit the color I called out. Now, depending upon the age and ability of the player is how quick you yell out, you yell out blue or white. It's a great drill. You could also toss two balls and yell high or low. If you yell high, they have to hit the higher one. If they hit low, they have to hit the lower one. If the player is advanced, another challenge and drill is you toss up two balls and you yell middle, and he's got to swing the bat in the middle and not hit either one of the rag balls. So, again, that's the rag ball drill. Okay, let's move on. By the way, in, in all sports, you have something called sports specificity. What that means is the exact activity that you want to become good at is exactly what you want to practice. In all sports, if you look up in the internet or in catalogs, they have all sorts of different things that are supposed to make you a better hitter, uh, a better shooter, or whatever it is. If you want to become a better hitter, you want your kid to become a better hitter, baseball or softball, have them practice hitting, okay? All these other things, some of them work, some don't work. I know a lot of the, these people that invent things, but have them hit. It's the same thing as in basketball. If you want to improve foul shooting, practice foul shooting. The next drill is the continuation drill. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's the concentration drill. Continuation drill is later. And what I do on this drill is I take a ball, and if you have, the player has a younger brother or sister, and on the ball, I'll put a color on two sides. This is yellow. What I usually do is I go to like a Staples and I get these uh, round colored stickers, probably the size of a quarter or a half dollar, and I'll stick them on the ball. Or you could write it or write it in with a short, different color Sharpie, which I don't like doing. And... As you pitch it and the player catches it, all they're doing is watching the ball go into the glove of the catcher. And once they determine what color is on the ball, they yell out the color, like yellow, blue, or even white if you don't put a color on. It's a very good drill. It teaches them to focus. It's what I call the concentration drill. Now, next, I just want to go over quickly uh batting practice okay i'm back now had a little bit of distraction with landscapers outside uh batting practice 
you might have seen this before. I'll go very quickly over this and I'll try to put on a link. I have a more detailed video on how I run batting practice. First thing is, as the players arrive, I give them, them a number. Uh, one is number one, two is number two. And that's how they'll bat when we do batting practice. And by the way, don't deny your team batting practice. They live for batting practice. All right, so number one is up. What I do is I set up two other stations. All right, and I hold it close. One is hitting off a tee, and one is a toss uh, drill. And I put coaches there. So number one is at bat. Number two, this is important. The on-deck hitter is ready to hit. It's not these guys here, all right? It's the guy who's batting next. He has his batting gloves on. He has his bat out of his bat bag. He's ready to hit. The reason I do this, I try to run it very efficiently. And I find my batting practices, I can get anywhere from 10 to 30 or 40% more swings for the players. I make sure there's an L screen. I go down to the base of the mound. I keep two balls in my glove. What I do is here, if you see closely, all right, I'll hold it up close. I have two cones at the bottom. My first two pitches, the player has to bunt, trying to get it between a cone. If they do, they get rewarded with an extra swing. All right? After the player goes, usually I give them anywhere from five to seven swings. They can add on to that if they bunt correctly. And when I run batting practice, there's no such thing as running the last one out. Batting practice is exactly what it says. It's batting, not running, not fielding. I have the players, I put two buckets, by the way. I'm sorry, I almost skipped this. One behind the pitcher's mound and one behind second base. The ball's hit to the outfield. They roll it into the bucket out here. To the infield, they don't throw to first base. They roll it into the bucket over there. Okay, that's how I do it. I've done it for years. It was a process over a period of time. If I would recommend to you, use this as a template. If you can improve it, improve it any way you want. But I found this was a great way to run batting practice. All right. Here's a drill that I, hitting drill, whoops, that I did. It's called the continuation drill. And what I do is I have the players at bat. And as long as they hit the ball on the ground in fair territory, they stay up, up to five swings. And what I'm trying to do is have players learn how to cut down on the swing. And in games when they have two strikes, I'll yell out continuation drill. In this drill, if they hit a fly ball and it's caught, the next player is up. If they swing and miss, the next player is up. If they swing and hit the ball foul, the next player is up. If they swing, hit it fair, and it hits the ground anywhere in the infield or the outfield, they stay up, up to either five or sw seven swings. It works. It's an excellent drill. I highly recommend it. The next drill I have, hitting drill, I call hole in the infield. Whoops, or hole in the diamond, actually, I used to call it. I just put two infielders, one between first and second, one between second and third. The outfielders you see there just to back it up, get the balls. The hitter has to hit the ball on the ground past the fielders. I like to teach my team that you have a better chance of getting on base in youth baseball, hitting hard ground balls. Line drives are great. I love line drives, but when you hit hard ground balls, in games, you have a better chance of getting on base, okay? So that's the hole in the infield. You can set it up as a competition, uh, one team against the other. Again, one infielder has to get through the infielder. If it does, the batter gets, let's say, one point. If they catch it, he'll get, like, let's say, three outs. Okay. Then I like to end with a uh, game or something on a high note. And I, I found that um, I do home run derby and I run it like this where I bring two drop down bases. I put two between um, the pitcher's mound and second base. And what I do is at the time when I was coaching, second base will be the uh, home plate for the 
10 year olds. I use this one for 11 year olds and this for 12 year olds. You're given players that would never have a chance to hit a home run, to hit it over the fence. Kids love this. Now, if you look close, you'll see the players holding a tennis racket. And that's because I expanded this and I started the game tennis racket, home run derby with the tennis balls. Kids love this also. So I highly recommend that. So those are just some of the uh, batting drills that I do. Keep in mind, if you're coaching, don't be afraid to give pointers to players. Now, you're going to have some really good players whose parents are paying anywhere from $85 an hour to $150 an hour the hitting lessons. You're not going to be able to compete with them. But you can still give subtle hints and pointers to them. The other thing is also is make sure you go by elite standards for bats. It's always changing year to year. So, you know, I would – I don't know if it if it's worth it to buy a $250 bat. I remember one year I bought my oldest son a bat and it turned out that it was a quarter inch bigger. So I had to return it. He was so disappointed. I felt like such a fool had egg on my face. Keep in mind that kids progress differently at different paces. Don't get frustrated. Work with your players. I'm a big believer in the batting tee. Use the batting tee. If you do get a batting tee, get uh, one of these uh, durable tees. There are so many of them out. People are trying to invent a better mousetrap when it comes to batting tees. I like the old-fashioned ones that are heavy-duty uh, rubber. They're a little heavier to transport, but I highly recommend that. Please, oh, also, please subscribe to Shoepack Sports. Share this with your league with your teams, with your parents, if you think it's worthwhile. As far as uh, products, excuse me, I have a hidden section in this book, Championship Baseball Drills. I'll put a link at the bottom of this. I highly recommend you, you get that. And if you can't afford it, don't spend money you don't have. Go to your library, insist they purchase it, even though I self-publish. Libraries are reluctant to buy self-published books. But if you or your league insist, they'll do it. The other book I highly recommend is this one, Baseball Coaching, A Guide for the Youth Coach and Parent. There's, I have over 300 pictures. There's a huge section on hitting in here. And um, that's about it. I want to thank you. If you didn't subscribe, please subscribe. And uh, if you can, give me a thumbs up. So until next time, the Shoe Pack Sports, I'm Marty Shoe Pack.